All right, lads, welcome back to me podcast, Cheaper Than Therapy, Mick Thomas here. How are you? Listen, thanks for liking, subscribing, sharing, and uh, coming back. I appreciate it. Available wherever you get your podcasts from. I'm also available on YouTube if you want to watch and look at this face, this bushel of a beard that's coming in pretty uh, pretty big to hide, I guess, the the the, the fat that I've been putting on based on my schedule this month. Um, also, look at that. The hat. Comic Strip Live hat. I'm there tomorrow night on my birthday. If you want to come and give me a gift. And also, I'm there this Friday night. Two shows at the Comic Strip. So swing on by. I'd love to see you. Um, but yeah, so if you're watching this on YouTube, you get to see all that. And also check out my other podcasts, which I have took a month off, I think from hiatus through nothing but scheduling, which I'll get into in a moment. Not a lot of laziness, a lot of laziness out there in the comedy industry, in the podcast industry, but not, not for me. Mine was all scheduling, uh, a scheduling conflict for the whole month. And I'll get into that in a minute, but yeah, the Manxiety show with my good buddy, Corey Brooks, we on there, we talk about mental health for men. It's not necessarily a comedy podcast, but we do try to have a little, take a light, humored approach to it. Um, we talk about that, you know, failed suicide attempts by yours truly, all the kind of stuff, all the fun stuff. Uh, check that out. And it, also available wherever you get your podcasts from. But yeah, I'm coming in. Look at this. Everything is, I'm growing my beard out because I think it's kind of trying to hide the fatness because this whole month has been a fucking whirlwind of shows. Been an absolute whirlwind. Um, you know, and. I, I, I didn't get to the gym as often as I'd like. Um, I kind of ate like shit because I was on the road. And it's something I kind of said I wouldn't really do. But I did anyway. You know, so I just kind of want to touch base with you on this week on the episode. I have no real strange topics to talk about. Nothing. It was, guess what's in the news? Although I did see um, Biden call Irish people stupid. Uh, and there you have it. You know, that's, that's he, he, you know, he said, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not stupid, but I am Irish. Something like that. Um... There you go. Irish people, the final frontier of people that you can make fun of and not get cancelled, not have an outrage about. Um, That's it. The Irish, just keep going. Make fun of us. You know, you call up human resources. You call up human resources. If you're any other other ethnicity, call them up. Right? You could be in work right now at your desk saying, hey, hey, listen, uh, Jose, I'm going out for uh, for Taco Bell. Do you want anything? And he'd be like, what the fuck does that mean? Because I'm Puerto Rican. I would like Taco Bell. Is that what that's supposed to mean? Call HR. You are going to be carrying your stuff to your car in a box, right? Well, you're going to have a fern hanging over the edge, photograph of your family as you march to the car, wondering like, what the fuck did I do? What did I do? I was just offering him Taco Bell because that's where I'm going. They have those nice gordita crunches. Sometimes I get it with beans, no meat. What did I do? <clears throat> fired. Go home, explain that to your family. What'd you get fired for? Why can't you pay the mortgage this month? I offered someone a chalupa. Gone. Uh, but call up HR. Call up HR. And, and, and say that someone said, the, you're after your lucky charms. HR will die laughing on the phone. They'll think that's fucking hilarious. Oh my God, that's hysterical. Did they do the voice and everything? They did the voice. They did the tatita tattoo that after me lucky charms. And HR will fucking die laugh at that. The final frontier. That's Irish people. Say what you like. Say what you like about the Irish. We, it's not that we can take it. We can take a joke. Right? We like a good joke. But I guess we're, we're it now. We're the last ones that you can just shit all over. And uh, no repercussions. Swing your swing for the fences, lads. Fill your boots. Um, yeah. So Biden was doing that. Him and, and then Nancy Pelosi was out there, and they were and they read a poem for Bono, uh, the president of Ireland. Bono is the president of Ireland. He read a, He wrote a poem about the Ukraine, and it was lovely. So I think the war is over, guys. We don't have to worry about it because Bono, Bono read a poem, wrote a poem about the Ukraine. So that's pretty much going to be wrapped up this week. Um, all your prayers uh, worked and you're changing your, your, your things, your thumbnail pictures uh, to the blue and yellow on your Instagram and your, your Facebook and all that stuff. So you, you did a great job, everybody. So congratulations, everybody changed their thing. 
to the Ukraine flag and then bon off course. You guys solved the problems, fixed the war. That is great. Good for you. Thanks so much. We were, I was worried there for a minute, but then I just realized, go go for it, you know. Go for it. Uh, so, yeah, we don't, we don't have to worry about that. So, anyway, Nancy read that poem out, you know, by Bono. And, you know, again, it's St. Patrick's Day. It, it, as I said it before, it's a, it's, a shitty, it's a shitty day. It's a shitty day. But we're out here enjoying the sun now, right? The sun with the gas prices the way they are. I took the motorcycle out. I used to get the motorcycle out. And I was like, I'm going to go for a ride today. I would never say I'm going to the store. Let me fire up the bike. Let me pull it from under the tarp. Warm her up. Let the engine run for a bit. That let her purr outside. Just let her purr outside for about five minutes. You know, let the engine warm up. Jump on it. Fucking give it a rev and just slowly leave the driveway. Now I'm going to take it everywhere. Now I could almost door dash. Right? Because there's two types of people in the world. There's those who door dash and those who eat the door dash. Who are, are, are on the other end of it. <clears throat> I could be one of those like, I have a full helmet on nobody would know it was me you'd be like knock on the door here you go here's your <clears throat> here's your whatever the fuck you ordered and I would just roll in I would roll in and, and I'd be fucking making that money as the kids are saying nowadays but um, yeah who knows but I did have a a, a phenomenal month uh, kind of speaking of Joe Biden kind of I did I, I, as you know I was doing a lot of these shows with um my friends from Ireland, off the boat Irish, uh, Dave Nyhill, uh, Sean Finnerty, and Martin Angolo. Katie Boyle jumped in there for one or two. And uh, I got to say, I had a blast. I really had a blast with them. You know, I really, truly had a blast with them. We we sold out Laugh Boston, Caroline's. We did some spots on Long Island, some shows on Long Island. We went down to Jersey. I mean, they, the lads are still touring. I think they're wrapping up the tour. I couldn't go in there because of other obligations. Um, I did some little gigs with, 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 with a buddy of mine, uh, Andy Cooney. And normally I'm like, oh, I got to work with, you know, because you when you do shows with Andy, it's like they're all old people, like like senior, senior people. It's probably the last show they're going to see. That's how old they are. And you have to be, you have to be squeaky clean, right? You have to be squeaky clean and that kind of stuff. And the old me would have been... Um, you know, kind of like, oh, I got to fucking go out here to these old people and, and whatever. And you know what, man? I, I I truly, truly had a blast. And I was I felt, if I'm being serious for a moment, right, I, I, I felt very grateful. I felt very grateful to be able to to meet new people, first of all, right? to, to I know Andy and his band for, for years, uh, but this time around, we really kind of got a chance to dare I say bond, but kind of hang out more and be in each other's space more. And I got to meet his new dancers, right? Irish dancers and, and just phenomenal ladies. Phenomenal ladies, right? Uh, Josephine, Alex, Aaron. Um, I think there's one more there that I didn't... I think Laura, her name was. I'm sorry if I'm getting your name wrong. Um, you know, I, I felt very grateful to be meeting these people. And I, got, I was very grateful to perform... I felt very grateful to perform for for the seniors, like senior people, um, because they were all great to me. Like I, I do a show and it was like I, I was dressed in black, all in black, right? And uh, I go up to this, you know, I'm on stage and I, you go up and you do a few minutes, you fifteen minutes, more music, dancing, intermission, dancing, and then I come back on. But during the intermission, I kind of walk through the room, like four hundred plus seniors, and I'm walking through the room. And everyone's calling you over. You were great. You're the funniest thing I've ever seen. Right? Uh, haven't laughed like that in years. Blah, blah, blah. All the stuff I'm used to. Listen, you don't need to give me praise. It goes on in my head every day. Right? Every day it's praise is going on. Trust me, save it. <laughs> but they uh, they kept calling me over. You were great. You were great. I was just trying to get to the back real quick to try to get a Red Bull. And this one woman called me over. And I go, yeah, my dear. What, what can I get for you? What's wrong? And she went... We didn't get our desserts. So, uh, she thought I was the waiter. That, uh, that's very humbling for you, right? That's very humbling when you go up and you murder the room and they, uh, all they cared about, she, she thought I worked there. That's how, that's how good it was. And, and, and that kind of made me put it in perspective a little bit. I was thinking, like, that's the president, doesn't it? Like, these people are younger. Some of these people are younger than the president. Again, it's not a political thing, but it's when you watch him and Pelosi talk and, 
it's like that's all that is just you're in a room full of bidens and pelosi's and you're like and these are people that have the keys because they all got onto a bus and left after the gig right they all got on the bus and left after the gigs not back to the white house to control the world because you would have been terrified if you saw some of those people to go back and and sit on buttons that you know but whatever whatever it was um you know so i got i got a chance to to do that uh and then i was up in poughkeepsie this weekend i'll come back to the to the seniors again in a, in a, in a second and, and the lovely dancers and, and 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 andy and all the band and stuff um sorry guys i just i I'm lost all my gains as the kids are saying now it is from just not really working out but i was up in poughkeepsie with dan barry and we sold out uh saturday night, we almost sold out friday night and um here's here's the thing right fucking poughkeepsie first of all before i go any further you guys were a great audience now i do apologize especially to the friday night show because i think i cursed too much now i like a good curse on stage every now and then but i think i came out with guns blazing because i'd done so many shows for seniors that i was like i need to let loose i need to just let it fucking go man i need to just drop some f-bombs um and i kind of went overboard i think and i caught myself and i was like all right enough of that pull it back um but i just i had a i had a blast in poughkeepsie you know the shows were great on friday and saturday uh you, you know the audience were just kind of like what we like we like what we don't like we won't we don't like there was no there's no uh not sympathy laughs but sometimes comics will get you get you're on a roll and you're killing you're killing you're killing you're killing you're killing and you'll do a joke that probably didn't hit as hard and the audience will go, ha ha, but we're still on a roll. So we'll still kind of laugh, just not as high. And then we'll roll into the next one and laugh higher again. But these are like, like, ha 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 ha, stop. Ha 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 again. It was, it was kind of cool. It was kind of cool. Made me work. And uh, I had a blast. So I'm up there with Dan. We we checked into a hotel. Dan Barry's my opener. And we're looking at a, doing a tour soon of the South, just the two of us. It's not that he's my opener. Let me take that back. Dan's not my opener. Dan just happens to open for me, but Dan can headline. Uh, I just choose that when I take gigs, I take Dan on the road with me as much as I can because he's just a great travel companion and a, and a fantastic friend. Um, you know, so I didn't mean to say, like, oh, he's my opener. I, I just, if I get gigs, like, there's, there, there, we're, we're looking at this tour now where both of us, either one of us could headline, you know. Uh, maybe Dennis Rooney, you know, from the Almost Irish podcast, we kind of might bring that whole crew back together, but Dennis Rooney seems to be on his own path now, headed down a different road. But I love Dennis Rooney, and if he wants to come along, he's more than welcome. But uh, I'm looking at a, a, getting a tour manager, uh, a friend of mine, to, to organize. So we're looking at kind of doing a nice little tour um, of the South, maybe to Virginia, Georgia, South Carolina, maybe North Carolina type of thing. And, uh, you know, just a quick run to see what, to see what we can do. Um, but anyway, so I, 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 like, I like kind of, you know, touring with Dan and that kind of stuff. So we go up. And we're driving. And it was so great for Dan to drive because I, all the driving I had done this month. So we get in. We pull up outside. There were like five lights away, five traffic lights away from the hotel. Nice hotel. And uh, we, we pull up. And I, I'm just sitting in the car board. And I look out. And I'm swinging. I'm on my chair. And I look out the window. And I see this car pull up. And just, you're not staring. But you know when you're just kind of looking like, what's that person got going on in their life in the car? I was a girl there, blonde hair, nice girl glasses uh you know just sitting there minding their business and i looked at it and i just looked away so then we go check in the hotel and we behind the counter is a girl that looked just like her and i said do you drive a a, a nissan ultimate and she went yeah i go and i, I go you know when you say something you realize when it comes out loud when it comes you hear it like that's i oh i should have said that but anyway i go yeah i, I was watching you in your car she went sorry at the light there, at the traffic light, I saw you, I was looking at you in the car. And I was like, fuck. And of course, Dan will immediately jump on that. Dan doesn't like, all right, let me see if this guy can fucking pull himself out of that. Dan will just make the situation worse. He's like, what a creepy thing to say. And it was a creepy thing to say, but I didn't, I didn't mean like that. It was just like, hey, I saw you the other day at the store. That's all that is. It was kind of one of those situations, but of course, it just came out really, really creepy. And um, so yeah, that that was, you know, and she, I think she was the reason why, because we were supposed to get, I don't usually stay in the hotel, even though I have the hotel for Friday, Saturday, I like to just get in the car after the gig Saturday night and just drive home. That's what I like to do. So, but I did request like a late, a late checkout on Saturday and I, they kind of wouldn't give it to us. And I think it was because I was creepy to that young lady. So if you're listening to this, 
I'm really sorry. I didn't mean it to come across creepy at all. Um, but yeah, nice gym there. The gym was kind of one of the machines I wanted to use were broken, so they gave me the pass to go to the local gym down the street, which was nice. It's nice to go to an actual gym. When you go to an actual gym, you realize how shitty like your plan of fitness is. I do. I go to plan of fitness. I joke about it on stage. Uh, you kind of realize how shitty plan of fitness really is when you go to like a real gym, which is regular equipment. And uh, I got to rethink that now, you know. I got, maybe since I'm going to be start going to the gym on the motorbike now, since I'm not going to be rolling up my car, I got to really start, you know, thinking of like, if you're on a bike now, you got to start pulling up to a real gym as well. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, and then we're in the mall. Me and Dan went to the mall on Saturday during the day, right? Because we had time to kill. The weather wasn't the best. We said, you know what? Let's go watch a movie. One of my things I like to do on the road. <laughs> so there's... Before we go to the movie, we got, I got about, about an hour to kill, right? We had about an hour, hour and a half to kill. So I walk around and get my kid. I got my son a video game that he wanted to play. I got my daughter some Japanese soda because she's big into anime. This is all her room, by the way. This is her anime books. These toys are mine. Um, you know, the, this wall here that you can't see is all anime. Um, you know, and, and so she's obsessed with, like a lot of kids are, with, of, of anime. So I got these sodas from Japan that, you know, the ones with the giggling, giggling girls. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't care. That's not racist. This is what they're making the anime show that she makes you watch. JoJo's Great Experience. Oh. Um, it's all that kind of stuff, you know. So. You know, it's just all. That's what anime is. It's fucking hysterical. But. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, I lost my trip. So then we go, we go to the, we we're walking through the mall, and all of a sudden, this guy comes up and he's like, uh, "Excuse me," and I go, oh, "Here we go." Getting recognized. Oh, he was at last night's show. I bet. Whatever. I'm gonna have a. Let's see here. Let's not let this go to your head, McDonald's. He walked straight by me. Went to Dan, my opener. He goes, "Hey, are you team tremendous?" Dan, being a professional wrestler, used to be part of a tag team organization called Team Tremendous. And uh, the guy's a big wrestling fan. So he kind of handed me his phone and said, can you take a picture of the two of us? Very humbling. Very humbling. Just like the woman the woman who said I didn't have her dessert. Which, by the way, second half of the show, go to my Instagram. I posted the video of what happened. I said, fuck it. I went backstage and I brought her out in front of the whole room. A plate full of desserts. There you go. Fuck it. You didn't get dessert. Now you got some hand delivered by yours truly. So yeah, very humbling. Very humbling month. The old people thought I was a waiter, and my opener is getting recognized at malls. Not me. Not me. So that's basically where it was a humbling experience. So I'm humbled. I'm humbled is what I'm saying. So that's, I guess that's the name of the episode this week. I'm humbled. And uh, so we go, to, we go to see Spider-Man again. I've seen it, I think, three times in the cinema already. And we know I'm a big uh, comic book fan. There's Spider-Man there with Doctor Strange in it too. And I, so we go see Batman. So we're sitting there, Spider-Man. Now, from previous episodes, if you all know McThomas, and I know you do right now, if you were to take one of those online quizzes, you know, in Cosmopolitan, you know, what's one of the things Mick hates most? Is it A, fat people? Is it B, oh, not again? All right, I'm not going to have a go fat people in this episode. All right, relax. I've changed. I've changed. I don't want to hurt feelings anymore. I don't want to hurt people anymore. But that would be a possible answer. I get it. I get it. I get it. Is it B, afraid of spiders? I love spiders. C, People who talk in movie theaters. Yes, that's my number one thing. I think, you know, when all this, the, the movie theater shootings happened, I was like, all right, hang on a second. Let's find out what happened before we start jumping to conclusions. And people are like, you sick motherfucker. Do you not understand that people were shot in a movie theater? Like, hang on a second. Sometimes things escalate. Sometimes things escalate, right? But didn't that something happen last, last winter up in Pennsylvania? They were arguing over someone throwing snow onto their lawn. And all of a sudden, the guy comes out with a gun. He said, you should have kept your mouth shut. Bang! And shoots. You don't remember that? I remember that. My brother said that it was graphic. Very, very graphic. So, anyway, we're at the movie theater. We sit down. We buy tickets online. So, right behind the handicap spots, which is a good spot uh, to be in, right? Because you got loads of leg room. You got a bar there. You put, you know, the mo whatever. It wasn't reclining chairs because it was Poughkeepsie. Um, that's not a dig up Poughkeepsie. It's just, you know, you know, you know who you are, Poughkeepsie. You know what I'm talking about when I say that. So don't don't act all hurt. Um, so anyway, I, I I we're sitting there and right next to us, three seats down are a family, a mother, father, and a son. The son's about five or six. Now, when you're five or six, you're old enough. You're old enough to 
um, know how to control the tone of your voice. So I don't blame the kid. I blame the dad because the dad kept saying to the son, you comfortable, bud? That's the thing. I always hate that when I hear dads call the kids, hey, bud, you comfortable, bud? He's not your bud. Um, and the kid's like, yeah, I'm fine. Like, like just, I'm like, oh, fuck. And this is during the trailers, right? That even bugs me during the trailers, but I feel I have no right to be upset during the trailers because they're trailers. Shut up, Mick. And you've seen the movie already, so why is it annoying? But I still paid top dollar to go see Spider-Man again. Dan hasn't seen it. I've seen it. Dan ain't. Dan ain't been to see this yet. So I'm sitting there, and they're talking, and they're being loud. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So as, and the theater's pretty much empty, right? If maybe a handful, four or five other people scattered throughout. And he's loud, and I'm like, fuck, I'm about... And I just, and I say this loud enough and, and, and Dan, you know, Dan was there. I say it loud enough and I go, just whisper to him, right? Nothing. And the dad cracked some joke. Like, you know, he's one of those political people that tries to push the things on his own kid. His kid's five. And it was a commercial came out for Southwest Airlines. And he's like, oh yeah, Southwest Airlines, if you want to get your plane to take off on time. Oh, did I say that out loud? I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. And your wife didn't respond because she she's obviously knows, like, oh, what am I trapped into? What what am I in now? What is this life I have chosen with this fucking loser who talks during movies? So he's sitting there and he's running his mouth again. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, in they come. A parade of disabled people, right? Now, it's St. Patrick's Month. Parades are crazy. Here comes another one. And I just sat back and was, well, of course. And there was wheelchairs, people who were walking bent over, people who were physically disabled, people who were mentally disabled. Five or six of them, right? And they come in and where do they sit? In the allocated seats that's allocated for handicapped people. And they're right in front of us, right in front of us. So I go to Dan, I go, listen, mate, let's just run up to the fucking back, way at the back, way at the back there, right? Way far back. That way, because when they started, Dan was like, how do you know they're going to start making noise? I go, Dan, this isn't my first rodeo. One of my favorite things to do is go to the movies. This is a bunch of disabled people. Now, you're listening on there going right now, oh, Mick, that's not fair. That's not right. You're having to go with disabled people now. I'm not. I just know enough. To know where this story is headed. So we go up to the back. And we're sitting there. Spider-Man's on. And every time Doctor Strange does this thing. Where he makes the fire circle comes in. And whatever he calls sparks. There's Doctor Strange right there. Makes the fire things. And he steps through it. One guy from the front. Because we're too far to the back now. But I could only assume. He was from the disabled group. He just kept going. Fire! Which I think is illegal to do in a movie theater. But I was all in. This was fucking good. Fire! And I'm laughing. Not at him, by the way. And then he goes, Coffee! Coffee! Now, if he was Irish, I could make fun of him and you guys wouldn't have a problem with it. For those of you who are upset now, you're like, ah, oh, he's not Irish. Go Fire! Coffee! Right, all this shit is going on. And Dan says to me, like, why, why are you laughing? And I go, because now he's sitting right next to the fucking father and the son that wouldn't shut the fuck up. So now they're going to be dealing with it. Now they're going to have to listen. We could barely hear it. And I'd seen the movie anyway. So now I'm laughing my ass off. And these kids are down there just going like, what? Fucking, this kid's like, holy shit. I want to see Spider-Man for the first time. And all of a sudden there's moments where Peter Parker is crying in it. And, and family members die in Spider-Man. I'm not spoiling anything. I promise someone close to him dies in it. Uh... You know, and it's a sad moment. There's tears and everyone's crying in the moment. Fire! And I'm, yes, fucking fire. It's hilarious. This was fucking one of the funniest moments. It was just great karma. If you believe in it, you know, it was just great karma to, to just see this father and son now who was trying to ruin my experience, get their experience ruined. It was funny. It was funny. And I wanted the guy to just yell out. He's like, fire! The guy to yell in. He's like, could you just please whisper? <laughs> it was a good time man it was a good time but like i said look at i did a lot of shows this month uh a lot of shows right a lot of shows to the point where i'm exhausted now i'm at the comic strip tomorrow night it being tuesday march 22nd my birthday uh and then on saturday friday night i'm there again for two shows um which i'm looking forward to kind of round up the month at probably my favorite comedy club um, you know the comic strip 
live. Probably my favorite comedy club. There's a, there's a few up there competing for second place, but that's close second place, by the way. Comic strip, I, I absolutely love and adore it. Um, I feel very grateful this month. I feel very grateful. I got, I had no bad shows. I didn't have one bad show. Uh, I didn't have one bad experience. I, I just treat, I really feel very grateful and blessed, if you will, if, if that, if I can say that without meaning it from a religious point of view. Um, I feel, I feel very blessed and I always just felt so lucky to be working with all great people, people I consider my friends, um, audiences that were just you know i felt very privileged to be able to perform in front of these great people from start to finish and now i can take the foot off the gas that it looks i knew march was going to be killer and i got a lot of projects i'm working on right now really big things that i'm working on that may lead to nothing but we kind of do have we're at next levels on these projects right so we're, we're knocking at the right doors and stuff and i'm very excited about um april but I really got to say, if you did come to any of my shows and you're listening to this, if you come to my shows at all this month, wherever that was, if you're one of those seniors, if you were up in Laugh Boston, if you were in, in you came to see me in Long Island at Governor's, um, at the brokerage in Belmore, if you saw me in New Jersey, the Gruner Theater, if you saw me at Caroline's, uh, if you saw me in Connecticut, you know, this, this month, North Carolina, if you saw me in North Carolina, how could I forget that? Um, I, 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 I truly am thankful um, for doing what I got to do this month. And I promised myself I would never work myself to that level again. Uh, but my mindset was different. And I'm not doing that again. Trust me, I'm not doing that level again. But I am grateful and I am very thankful for, for being able to, to, to do that. Uh, you know, and I went through a stage in my life where I kind of like was thinking about quitting and that kind of stuff. And, and I, I, I fell back in love again with stand up comedy. And, um, you know, I remember why I got into it again. And, and so if you've come to one of those shows in the month of March, you know, you got to share something with me and I got to share it with you and I got to, uh, I got to fall back in love again with stand up. So I'm very, very thankful. So for leaving it on a soppy note like that. What I will say is come see me tomorrow at the comic strip, working out a bunch of new stuff, bunch of new material. Or else, if you want to come see me on Friday, I am there. And check out the also the Manxiety show, also available where you get your podcast. So till next time, as always, wash your hands, you dirty fuckers. I'll talk to you soon. Good luck to you. Good luck to you.